is not a sport. It is designed for the emergency when your life may depend upon the ability to outwit or overcome an armed enemy, perhaps with only your two hands. These tactics of defense and counterattack combine the essential elements of jiu-jitsu, savat, American wrestling, and plain rough and tumble fighting. So first, let us examine some of the basic fundamentals. The basic body stance is one of easy balance, deceptively relaxed, yet actually always ready for quick counterattack. Arms are held lightly across the chest or spread with hands on hips. From either position, they are shifted instantly to meet an assailant's lead. Feet are slightly spread and firmly balanced. They must never be crossed, but always ready to shift or pivot according to the character of the maneuver. delivered with a nice edge of the hand to the points of greatest vulnerability. These primary vital points include the side of the neck midway between chin and ear, just under the jawbone, the larynx or so-called Adam's apple, the bridge of the nose, the upper lip just at the juncture with the nose, the back of the neck at juncture of skull and spine, the kidneys at the lower edge of the ribs. The solar plexus, which may be attacked either with the edge of the hand or with the point of the hand in a straight jab. This straight jab is well adapted to a blow at the Adam's apple or in a direct attack to the eyes. One of the most vulnerable of all vital points is the groin, where even a light blow is capable of complete incapacitation. Attack strategy utilizes the feet to stamp on an opponent's arch, to deliver a sharp blow to the shin or to the groin. The knee is also a weapon of counterattack, striking into the groin, into the face of an opponent when bent over, or into the solar plexus. Basic hand holds and leverages are designed to take greatest advantage of leverage on joints and bones. This is the wrist block, holding the opponent's wrist in both hands. The thumbs exert pressure on the back of the hand, Pressing the wrist joint backward and outward at the same instant. Another primary hold is the reverse wrist lock. The opponent's hand is twisted inward. As the elbow rises, additional leverage is applied at the elbow. Any resistance on the part of the opponent only increases the pain and the effectiveness of the hold. Twisting the hand inward imposes terrific leverage on the wrist. Pressure against wrist locks the elbow. A hammer lock with the addition of downward pressure for forcing the wrist joint. In this basic headlock, one arm is passed around the opponent's neck and locked over the other arm, while one hand is utilized to control the opponent's head. Any attempt to escape only tightens the hold. Simple strategy in forcing the back is the application of leverage. With one hand holding the belt and the other applying pressure at the throat, or with one arm around the waist exerting leverage at the chin. Forcing the knee is an elementary hold which recurs in different adaptions in a wide variety of maneuvers. Breaking grips, hand holds. Simple hand holds obtained by an opponent are most easily broken, regardless of his physical strength, by forcing against his thumb, either inward or outward. motion photography clearly illustrates how forcing upward against the thumbs of an opponent nullifies even superior physical strength and breaks the grip. Breaking rear stranglehold with body twist. When a stranglehold is applied, it is possible to escape by means of sudden body twist with lowered head. In slow motion, it will be observed that hunching the shoulders and twisting breaks the hold while the hands are held in a position of defense against kicks or knee blows. Breaking the rear strangle holes with thumb lock. When a rear strangle hold is applied at arm's length, the breaking hold may be applied to the thumbs. With this leverage, the assailant's grip is most easily broken, and because of its acute twisting force locking the elbow, his power of resistance is minimized. His face is brought down into effective range of a 
we live. Now, in slow motion review, lock the thumbs, twist body, knee lift to face. apply from the rear, don't attempt instantly to break the hold, but insert hands over arms to get a breath and loosen the strangle. Strike him sharply in the groin with the open hand or fist. As his reaction throws him out of position, drop to the knee corresponding to the side of his approach and throw him over the shoulder with a flying mare. As he lands, the natural position of his arms and body makes it easy to apply an elbow lock. This advantage may be followed up by a vigorous attack to any part of the body. Now in slow motion, gaining a full breath, a blow to the groin, dropping to one knee, the flying mare, the elbow lock. Breaking the rear body lock with leg lift. resting on hips, the natural inclination of an assailant is to clamp his hold inside your arm. Before he can complete his hold, lean over and seize his nearest ankle, drawing his leg up between your own. Having thus gained the initiative, follow it up by throwing him and landing with your full weight on his chest or abdomen. Now in slow motion with you, seize ankle, pull up, Drop on chest or abdomen. Breaking rear body lock with standing switch. In this counter, the first move is to secure your assailant's arm with your hand, then locking your left foot behind and inside his. Clinch your position by getting a grip on his leg or groin with your left hand, then fall backwards. With your assailant on the deck, you can choose between breaking his arm or continuing the attack to back of neck while he is immobilized by a leg spread clamp on his feet and legs. Now in slow motion review, secure the arm, note positioning of foot and leg, hand in clutch, complete switch, spread leg. Breaking rear body lock with hip lock. As the assailant clamps on his body lock, turn into him, seize his arm just above the elbow, and bring your other hand around and up to a point just below his shoulder. Stepping across in front and leaning outward, you are in a position to apply a hip lock, landing with your full weight on his chest or abdomen, and with both his arms still securely pinioned for further counterattack. Now in slow motion, seize upper arm with both hands. Apply hip lock. Breaking front strangle with arm wedge. Clasp the hands firmly. Note, however, that the fingers are not intertwined. Lunge upward, striking with full power of shoulders and arms, breaking grip of assailant, and in the same continuous motion, bring down clasped hands on the bridge of his nose or other vulnerable points of the face. In slow motion photography, observe the progressive details of the complete maneuver. Clasp hands firmly, Lunge upward, strike blow to nose. Breaking front body lock with knee lift or foot kick. First objective in the front body lock counter is to force the salient 
his body far enough away to maneuver. Then he may be thrown off balance by stamping on his arch. A shot kick to the shin, a blow to the groin with the knee, or a combination of all. The fallen man should be approached from the rear, out of range of his feet, as to a position to continue the counterattack. Now, in slow motion review, force body away, stamp on arch, combination of all. Approach from rear to continue counterattack. Breaking front body lock with hip lock. In body lock counter, the assailant's arm is seized and clamped at the elbow. Your other arm is passed under and around his opposite arm at the chest. With both his arms secured, and by extending the hip and bending to the side, you are set to throw him with a hip lock, landing with your full weight on his ribs and abdomen, and in position to continue any counterattack. Now in slow motion, seize arm at elbow, extend hip to side, apply hip lock. 